Hello everybody, it's Friday. It's time for Facebook Friday. I hope you guys have had a good week. I have had a very busy week and I, um, but I'm excited to get this done today. I've got, I'm showing you one of my favorite sets from the holiday catalog. Um, as always, when I am done with the projects today, you can hop over to my blog and find a PDF like this. It has um, all three projects on it, and it has the measurements, and it has item numbers if you want to order any of the things that I show you today. Um, so that will be on my blog. I scheduled a blog post to start as soon as um, we go live today. Hi, Darlene. Um, so hopefully it'll be there. Uh, before I move on, I want to tell you I do a giveaway every week when I do Facebook Live. And last week I gave, I said I was giving away a paper share from the holiday catalog. And so Courtney Mitchell, uh, you were the winner. So Courtney, I have your mailing address. Unless it has changed, I will get this out to you on Monday. Hi everybody, welcome. So congratulations, Courtney. Now today's giveaway kind of goes along the same lines as last week's. This is the embellishment and ribbon share. I did both of these shares when that catalog first came out. And uh, you can see this is one yard of all the ribbon and trim and um, a little bit of all the embellishment. So that's what I'm gonna give away this week. One person will win this. Um, you must be in the United States, please. Um, so that giveaway, it's called a raffle copter and it'll be listed at the bottom of my blog on today's post. Just go over there and put in your email address and you'll be entered to win. Everybody is eligible to win as long as you live in the United States. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I decided to focus on the seasonal lantern bundle. This is one that didn't catch my eye right away, but I saw somebody do something with it on Pinterest and I had to have it immediately. And so I ordered it and I don't really see that many samples online. So I don't think it's getting the attention that it deserves. So I decided to devote today, Facebook Friday, to the seasonal lantern set. And as you might know, I also have a class to go that I'll talk a little bit about at the end um, that is centered around this, this cute bundle. Okay, so we're gonna do three different projects. And as you can see, this, this stamp set has 36 stamps. So that means that there are lots of options. And this also is a set that could lend itself to kind of over the top, tedious type cards, which I'm a fan of. Um, and it also has lots of little framelits, which also means layers and lots of um, kind of over the top things. So the first card I'm gonna show you has lots of layers and it, um, probably you wouldn't want to make a hundred of these. I don't know, maybe some of you like to do that. I don't like to make a hundred of anything. Um, but when I do, I want it to be really simple. So this I might make a few of for, for very special people. Maybe my mom would get this Christmas card or my best friend. So I'm going to show you, um, how to make this and I'm going to showcase a few of the things in here. Um, I actually didn't put a sentiment on the front, and I think today, I didn't add it in, but um, I think we'll put one on the inside. All right, so we're just gonna start by getting our card base, and this is our Whisper White Thick um, cardstock, and it is just um, a sheet cut in half and scored in the middle. And this is a piece of the DSP. This is the Christmas Around the World DSP that is part of the buy three, get one free right now sale that Stampin' Up's ha having. And you don't have to buy three or four packs of this paper. You can mix and match of all the different uh, papers that they have listed. And this has become one of my favorites. I really like these plaids. All right, so we're gonna just put that on there. Remember, all the measurements are on um, that sheet on my blog. All right, now we're gonna do a little bit of stamping and then we're gonna do a whole lot of big shot work. So this is Garden Green. And I'm gonna use these two stamps that go together. Um, one is kind of the outline, which I thought originally I would just leave it like that, but then I decided I wanted to fill in those leaves. And I tried my best to line my stamps up so that I could stamp them at the same time, but they weren't really perfect, but I think they're close enough. All right, so just garden green on garden green cardstock. And we're going to cut those out. So let's get these two framelits that look like this. And then we're gonna cut out the outline lantern. That's the best term I can, I can give 
to you. It's the more intricate, and it, look, it still has some gold pieces. I have my brush here. I just need to use that, get those gold pieces out. So we're going to cut that out in gold. We're going to cut the background out in the solid um, framelit that looks like that. And actually, you know what, before we do this, I have been showing you guys these adhesive sheets and I um, was using old adhesive sheets I had and I ran out of them and I ordered some new ones and this is how they come. They're actually six by 12 and there are 12 in here and they go a long way. They last a long time. They're called the multi-purpose adhesive sheets and you can find them on the um, adhesive page in the catalog. So because that, that, um, Lantern is intricate, and you guys know I don't like the fine tip glue. I'm going to use this, this multi-purpose adhesive sheet, when I can remember to actually use it, is my favorite. So I just kind of cut the paper the size I needed. That helps me not waste too much of my adhesive sheet, because then I can still use that later. So that comes off, and you can see now it has an adhesive back. So when we cut that, it'll be easy to stick right down. Okay, so let's see what else we need to cut. We're also gonna cut this guy, and I am using the Scallop Edge. Uh, this is from the Seasonal Layers uh, Framelits, which I used last week also. And we're gonna stamp a pine cone. We're gonna punch one of these pine cones out. And I'm just, there are two different pine cone stamps. I'm actually going to use the one that has well, get off of there. One that has the open lines, and I'm just gonna do that in early espresso, on early espresso cardstock. We're gonna use those again in a minute. All right, let's see, what else do I need to cut? I think that's it. I'd like to get it all on there at the same time. So let's move everything out of the way and get the big shot, which is all the way across the room. I was doing some mass production before this cutting out some future stamp club projects. All right, let's see if we can get all of this on here one time. That goes there. This one goes here. You guys see that? While I'm lining these up, I just wanna remind you, just like last week, I think we're gonna to have to do this one. Hmm, let's see. Just like last week, if you wanna put in an order this weekend, um, if you use my hostess code, I will send you, we're gonna save that one and do it by itself. I will send you all the make and takes, all three of the make and take projects in the mail for free. Well, these guys, I may have to do them separately because we need to find a good place for them not to wiggle around. Okay, let's move those out of the way. The magnetic sheet, magnetic platform, holds your framelits in place, but when they are small framelits, they wiggle around. And so you have to kind of find the right place on your magnet, magnetic platform. All right, I'm gonna move these out of the way for now. And I've told you guys before, just you know, move the paper around wherever the magnet wants to go. You're not gonna be able to force that magnet or that framelit to go against that magnet. So you're just gonna to have to move the paper. And these are gonna be stubborn on me. You can also use a post-it note, that's old school. Use a post-it note, stick it down, which we may have to do here because these guys are being very naughty. Let's see. Do you guys have naughty framelits that don't like to stay? Okay, let's see. Ah, let's see. Very carefully. Yeah, the, the smaller they are, the naughtier they are, and they don't like to go where you tell them to go. That did pretty good. Okay, now this one also you have to be really careful because you don't want it to go crooked and we're gonna we're gonna cut this across the bottom hopefully we don't get a crooked scallop yes naughty I know I know they're very naughty all right let's see here we go now remember this scallop edgelet is from seasonal layers this is not from the, the lant seasonal lantern this is one I find myself using this this uh, framelit set the seasonal layers practically every day it feels like because I just love all the pieces they're versatile very versatile okay so we've got that we've got that um, here is this guy let's we're gonna use the brush to get all the little doodads out or your paper piercer if you have some that are stubborn let's see perfect okay now that's pretty right that came out we should save that and use that later that's a good 
good piece of gold that we don't need to throw away. Okay, now the white. Here is the white background, the solid. And I'm going to take, remember we put that adhesive background on it. I mean that adhesive multi-purpose adhesive sheet. That's such a mouthful. And I'm just going to get to stick it down right there. Perfect. All right, lovely. Now I'm going to do these um, pine cones and I actually need to get a piece of red paper because I'm going to stamp off. And stamp off, if you don't know what that means, that means to, you're going to ink the stamp. Where's my ink pad? You're going to ink the stamp, but you don't want it to be that dark. So then you're going to stamp off of it. Now we're going to do that with the inside. So let's just first do the crisscrossy outlined pine cones normal like we normally would. No stamping off. And the reason I would do the stamping off is because I want a lighter color. And if I stamp this right now on there, that would just be like it kind of would all blend together because it would be too dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink it and I'm gonna stamp it there. And then I'm gonna to try to line these up the best I can while I'm not sticking my head in the camera. Let's see, maybe I need to do it the right way to make it work right. There we go, it has a little point on it. If you guys see how it has little points, that way you know I was stamping it like that. And, we'll do, oop, I didn't stamp off. Mm -mm. Good thing it didn't line up very well. So now we can go back. There we go, pretty good. I like those pine cones. So many things you can put in the lantern. I um, was inspired to make this card. I wonder where our um, my my little lantern, I mean my little pine cone went. God, I'm a mess today. I'm a mess every day it seems like when I do these. All right, let's get organized. So I was on Pinterest and I just typed in Christmas lantern. And then I was like looking to see what all there was that wasn't necessarily with a stamp set. And I found a picture of a lantern that was actually a real lantern, somebody's decoration. Um, and it was gold and it had a big giant poinsettia flowers on top. And so I thought, okay, I have to do that. All right, so let's tie the ribbon. This is garden green before we stick that lantern on there. And I'm just gonna tie it all the way around. And I get lots of questions about tying bows. And I think it's one of those things you just need to practice. And it does depend on what you're tying the bow with. This uh, is the satin ribbon that ties really well. But one thing I like to do is to make sure I take these and I pull them flat. See, they're not twisted. You wanna make sure that those are flat. And then do your loops. And if you don't like to tie a bow, then don't tie a bow, just do a knot and cut it off. And then you can adjust these before you pull it real tight. But this ribbon is very forgiving. And I think practicing bows with this ribbon would be a good idea. This is the satin ribbon. You can even kind of straighten them out like that. All right, now let's get our lantern. Couple of dimensionals. I think I have lost that pine cone. I don't know where it went, so we're just gonna pretend like it's there. Let's see, how far did I go down? Oh, I went pretty far down on the original one. All right, now, these are our little, um, little foliage, sprit, pine sprigs, or greenery. I guess greenery would be the right word. Now I was like, okay, what can I use for the poinsettia? So I got this Blossom Builder Punch Out that I have not used a whole lot. And I thought, I'm gonna use that little, that little star-shaped flower right there. I'm gonna do two of them like that. And I want them to curl up a little bit. So if you get your stylus and you just kind of go around in the middle of it, like that, see how it starts to curl up a little bit? So I did that on both. You wanna do two of them. And then just some glue dots. 
see this card has lots of pieces and layers. Not, not a card I'd want to do a hundred of. I mean, I definitely think it's beautiful, but I don't want to do a hundred of them. All right, the last thing, these are our um, metallic enamel dots. And I'm going to use a gold one right there in the middle. And there you have it. Now, I did, oh, I never cut it out. Look, there it is. We'll pretend that I cut it out with that big, long thing of big shot work I did and just put it right here or over here on the side like I did here. And that's it. So no sentiment, but inside would be a great place to stamp your sentiment. Let's see, I have one right here. And we'll do red. Have you guys started thinking about Christmas or are you still like all Halloween, Thanksgiving? I um, have to work pretty far ahead designing things. Um, so I feel like Halloween happened a long time ago, <laughs> you know, because I designed Halloween probably in late August. And so now I'm full on Christmas everything. But trying to find Christmas anything in the store is impossible. All right, so there's our first card over the top. I hope you like it. It's fun. I really like this outline um, die the best of the whole thing. It's my favorite. Really like it. All right, so let me throw everything in here and we will move to the second card. The second card I designed to be a card that you might make a hundred of. Um, if you're making a bunch of Christmas cards, the next one is much simpler and easier. And in fact, here it is. In fact, this is the card we did at, my, this is one of the cards that we did at my card class this last month. Um, and I think it was pretty easy. Um, nobody seemed to, nobody was barking at me for too much work. Sometimes they do that, but not this month. Um, and it's cute. And I actually copied, and I don't know if I copied it completely, but it is from the uh, demonstrator magazine that we get. That's one of the perks of being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. We get a magazine quarterly that has all kinds of ideas and stuff in it. And this was a card that I either copied completely or, or uh, copied uh, somewhat from. So we're going to just stamp this lantern. This is a different lantern. Um than what you saw in the first one. This is actually a smaller one. Let me get organized and think about what I'm doing. Um, I'm also using that paper again, the Christmas Around the World paper. And I didn't do any, a whole lot of big shot work on this. That's what makes a card um, take forever is when you have to die cut a lot of stuff. So this is just gonna be one die cut. All right, so there's the outline. Now I'm gonna get my, see how there's an outline and a solid. I'm not looking at you guys' comments at all. I'm so sorry. If, if I start reading and talking, I will just, whoops. See, I'm already making a mistake because I'm reading your comments. That was basic gray. This is smoky slate. Sorry, guys. All right, so we're gonna do the inside in smoky slate and my clear blocks are a mess you can tell that they get lots of love lots of use all right see how it's off a little bit right there on the edge when that happens i just stamp again and usually it looks pretty good see it's just a little bit darker i think it looks nice all right, so we're gonna do with, we're gonna bring that basic gray back and do the outline of the candle. And we're gonna do the inside of the candle in real red. And then the flame, you know, I really should be closing my stamp pads or something really bad will happen. Like, I'll drop everything in it. All right, here's the little tiny flame stamp. Isn't it cute? Right there, Daffodil Delight. And then there's this little glowing stamp like that. So cute, that's my favorite part. All right, so now all we have to do is get, and it's a different, see this is the solid framelit we used last time. This is the solid framelit we're gonna use this time. See how they're different? We're actually gonna use both of them in the next project. All right, so Big Shot comes back. 
and magnetic platform. Right there. Let's see if we can get it to situate correctly. Hi, Belinda. All right, here we go. I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I mounted my phone completely off my table, so there's no more shaking when I do my big shot. Yay! Hi, Reba. I'm from Texas, too. That's a good name to be from Texas, Reba. That's a great name. Okay, so Smoky Slate card um, base. This time, it is a long card, so you cut on the 11-inch side at five and a half, and you fold it in half. Here is more of that Christmas Around the World DSP. It has nutcrackers on the back. It's, uh, I believe, three by four, but look on my product, I always say that, project sheet on my blog, and you will see, hmm, that was supposed to go under there. All right, well, we'll just change it up. You will see all the measurements. This is a six by one and a half, and I punched it um, with the banner triple punch, and it was actually left over from my class. That's why I'm not punching it for you. It's already done. I love it when it's already done. All right, how about a vellum? I'm using vellum again. You guys, I'm using vellum like every day. I love it. It's my new paper addiction. All right, so I put the dimensionals on the vellum so that they'll be covered up with the lantern. I've been getting lots of questions about what adhesive to use with your vellum, and there really is no perfect um, adhesive. I will say that I do have an adhesive that's made for vellum that I bought at the craft store. Shh, don't tell anybody. And it doesn't work very well either. It, I think it works just the same as Fast Fuse. So when you have to use um, adhesive, use, and you know, I just would use the, this, or maybe even if you pulled out the, the multi-purpose adhesive sheet and then put adhesive completely on the back, like we did with the lantern, then you, you wouldn't see it at all because it's covering the whole thing. All right, so there's that, all dimensionals, and let's get that stamp we'd used a minute ago, and we're going to cut, we're gonna stamp it again in basic gray, straight across. This is just a, a strip of real red that is about the height of the words, and just a little bit longer. No, no fancy measurements. And I'm gonna put that there. I see, Nicole, you've been using vellum a lot too. I know, it's great. It really kind of adds a neat little layer. All right, there's that. See how this would be something that you could do quick and easy? I think this is a pretty fast card. All right, this is the 1 8 inch sheer, red. I think it's sheer, or maybe it's, Oh, let's see, real red, and it says solid. That's all it says, one eighth inch solid. I think it's like, I don't know, like it's it's very um, light. I can't think of the word. It's, um, I don't know, gauzy, and it's kind of hard to tie a bow with actually, but it doesn't add a lot of bulk to your cards, so I really like it. All right, so use just a glue dot, uh-oh. Oh, come on now. And I'm gonna put that right there. And that's it, done. See, that was way easier than the first one. So you have to decide, you know, do you wanna do um, over the top like this, or do you wanna do simple? They're both beautiful, and they're both um, the same stamp set. So you can see how you can take a stamp set and, you know, do it like, a level 10 to a level one, you know, make it easy or make it hard, just depending on um, what you want to do. Okay, so the last project, I will tell you that I struggled, um, I struggled with. I really wanted to do a 3D project um, using this set, and I went through a lot of different thought, thoughts, and I finally decided to do kind of a cookie box, and my inspiration again was um, Pinterest. I searched Christmas Lantern. Not, not the stamp set name, but just Christmas Lantern. And again, lots of home decor, like I told you earlier, with the one with the poinsettia on it. And I saw one that was red, and it was filled with candy cane um, ornaments. 
and it was so cute. And so that's the inspiration for this guy. Um, it's our pizza box, which if you guys haven't gotten them yet, you need to. They're so cute. And inside I put some of those, not just regular peppermints, but those, they're called soft peppermints, even though they're still kind of hard. Um, what I really would like to put in here is those loft house cookies. My grocery store sells loft house cookies, the big puffy cookies with all the icing on the top. And during the holidays, they have candy cane crumbled ones. So that I think would look really cute in there or even some little candy canes. So that's what I went with. And I'm going to show you this one is actually not too terribly hard. Um, there is some kind of funny um, big shot work that I'm going to show you. Now, what we're going to do is cut through the um, pizza box with this framelit and a framelit really is only designed for paper um, and so cutting through something really thick like this um, is probably um, not the best thing you know like if you did a hundred of them you would probably need a new framelit set so stamping up probably would not condone cutting <laughs> chipboard or fabric or anything with their framelits but i'm just going to show you an alternate use so just know that this is um not the the paper that's intended for your framelits um and it does take a little bit of finagling the first time i did it i cut this out like this and then i went back with the paper and i cut this out but then i found you know it was kind of like off centered and i tried to cut it um and line them up and I thought you know what the bet the best way is to put this paper right on the lid of what's going to be the lid of this box now when I cut the box by itself with a framelit no problem like it was it cut beautifully it was really perfect but then when I cut it with a paper on it it needed a lot of extra like run throughs which I found weird because the paper is thin I mean designer series paper is is you know like copy paper it's not very thick but apparently that additional layer needed a couple of run throughs and I even had to kind of push it through so I'm going to show you you may have a better way of doing this um and these candy cane stripes again this is that paper that I love Christmas around the world um on the back is I don't know cookies or something and so um you can do it up and down you could do sideways or you could even cut it so the diag so the stripes go diagonal um but then you kind of waste some paper so anyway I put that on the lid um the measurements to that are on that project sheet on my blog and I'm going to put the framelit right there um if you have the the why can I, I never remember the name the the platform that's for oh you guys what's it called the platform that the precision platform that will probably help this cut better see how I'm running it through a couple of times and I can look on the back and see it it's there but it's not cut all the way through that's why I did the first time so then I got old school again and I got a shim and a shim is just a fancy word for some extra cardstock or thin chipboard that you have. And I just put it here on top and that's creating that sandwich. This is what we call a sandwich. It's creating a little more pressure in there. Hi, Amy. Yeah, you know what? Don't resist this set. You need it. It's so cute and it's versatile because, um, you know, I'm imagining flowers in the spring and seashells in the summer. Okay, let's see if that shim helped. It did. I can see that it cut through a little bit more. So I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to carefully, <laughs> I'm going to carefully, well, I brought, you know what it is? It's that plastic layer that's inside the pizza box um, that has a tough time. So if you just get your X-Acto, your blade, and just kind of get it started, then it's it'll pop out. There we go. All right, so see, it's just a little bit too thick for our framelits, but it, we can make it work. All right, let's get that out. Come on. A little finagling with the, the um, razor. But like I said, when I cut it just from the box by itself without the paper, it came right out with no problem. So I don't know. I don't know why that is because I don't think that that paper is that thick. Okay, so now I'm going to take a window sheet. A window sheet, you probably can't even see it. This is a clear, um, like a clear plastic 
Um, it reminds me of overheads. If you were ever a teacher and you used an overhead projector, that's what these are like, overheads. And they come in 12 by 12 sheets and you can find them in the catalog. I'm gonna put that on the back. All right, now let's go ahead and assemble this box. Um, the measurement on that window sheet is on that project sheet. I can't remember. It looks like the one I cut is a little bit too big, but I think it's like three by three or three and an eighth by three and an eighth. So you wanna just go ahead and fold all these in and put the sides in first. And then this kind of reaches around and grabs that side and you push those down in there like that. And you come up with this one and like that. Gosh, I just had a thought popcorn would be cute in there too because that almost looks like, like a popcorn box, isn't it? Very cute. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside for a second. We're gonna cut out something else. Um, actually, we're gonna cut out two things. Let me do the stamping before I do that. We're gonna stamp, I did these actually in two different ones. Let's see, where's my other one? I couldn't decide which one I like the best. Well, I thought I had it over here. Oh, I do, they're right here. See, this one's in white and this one's in red. I don't know, I think white's my, I think white's my favorite. Which one do you guys like better? I don't know, hmm. I like, you know what, I like this one better because this stood out with this red behind here, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so let's stamp this guy again. I'm gonna clean him off a little bit. Hopefully he's clean. And I'm gonna find my red ink. That is mysteriously blocked away. What? Hmm, it's gotta be here. Every week, oh, it's right here. It's under all the other ink pads. Okay, every week I lose something and every week the dogs bark. I know they haven't yet. They're, they're locked up today, but that won't stop them. They're not that far. Um, all right, so let's stamp that. We're going to cut that one out. And we're going to cut one of these out. Okay. Oh, it has suddenly gotten really hot in here. I have to turn my fan off because even that makes the camera shake. All right. I want you guys to be able to see. You know, I just thought that looks like a fire hydrant, doesn't it? Mmm, we could make that a fire hydrant. That would be so cute. All right, so let's line that up. There. This one looks like a fire hydrant too. And there. And I have stuff everywhere on this table. Put this carefully and run it through. Now we're not done with this one yet. We're gonna have to do something else to that. But first we need to cut a window out of this one. So these don't, I don't believe that these are designed to go together, but I'm making them go together. You can see, I mean, it doesn't really match up, but it's gonna give us a nice outline for our window. Um, because I felt like by itself, it just kind of blended into that paper. Oh, would you stop being naughty? You're not even little. I think I need some new um, clear plates because they're really bowed. And that makes a big difference too with that magnetic platform. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, let's turn it over. I hope you guys enjoy seeing all my struggles. I hope it makes you feel better because we all have these struggles. There, that's better. Turn the magnet, or turn the clear plate over. Aw, oh, thanks, Sherry. I appreciate that. Okay, so look, I'm going to have to save that. That's so cute. But we're using this part. All right, I do believe we are done with the big shot. So let's get our box over here. Now, we need a window, right? And that doesn't have a window. The framelit set has this right here. But that would go on the big one. It doesn't cut the small one. So... You're gonna have to get out that X-Acto knife, which, where's my little sheet? Hmm, I had a foam mat for that and I don't see it. But I'm just gonna get started with the X-Acto. I'm not gonna try to go straight on that line. I'm actually gonna kind of go to a curve like that, just enough to stick my scissors through. And they're straight lines, so it should be easy. We're gonna cut along 
the inside of the window, leaving the red line there. We wanna make sure that that red line stays there. All the way around. The best way to do this is to use the smallest scissors that you have, small and sharp. If you try to use big scissors, it's gonna be difficult and it's probably not gonna look good. Okay, there, now we have a window. And I'm done with the X-Acto. Okay, I'm actually just going to use my glue dots to stick this down. I went to the grocery store today and I looked for the candy cane cookies with no luck. You know what, let's see. I'm gonna do, yeah, we can go ahead and do that first, like that. And then before I stick this other one down, I'm gonna take, this is one of our tea lace doilies, and I'm just gonna cut off, let's see, one, two, three. See how there's three bumps? So I'm gonna just cut off three bumps. Is it, yep, there's like a big bump, little bump, big bump. So I want it to be the same on both sides. Yes, those are technical terms, big bump, little bump, I mean, they're technical in my mind anyway. All right, so we'll put that one there. And this is gonna be covered up a little bit in a second. I want it just sticking out a little bit. And if you have fine tip glue pen, this would probably be a good place for it. If you have a steadier hand than I. All right, now here's this funky one that we cut out. And see, oh, that needs to go. I thought it would be better underneath sticking out, but it doesn't. All right, change of plans. I've made this, I've actually made this project. This is the fourth time, and every time I do something different. I couldn't get it exactly how I wanted it each time. I wanted it to be different. All right, so one of the times I actually put the middle lantern, the one that's white, on dimensionals. And I liked that, I think I liked that the best. Okay, now let's see if we like that. Mm, I don't know, maybe it needs to be smaller. I don't know, but we're going with it. We are going with it or I'll be here all day. Mm, come on. So anyway, I was at the grocery store, I looked for those cookies and I almost wanted to ask them if they had any <laughs> blank cookies in the bakery with just the white icing, but I was in a hurry, so I decided not to. And I'm just gonna stick with the little peppermints for now until those cookies come in. That's what I'm gonna put in these boxes. All right, so there we go. Um, the bow is just this white woven ribbon. Is that the same size as the ticket punch? Ooh, I don't know. It's a good idea, Sally. I mean, I can't imagine that it would be that perfect, but that's a great idea to try it. Or you know what, I just thought instead of using an X-Acto, you could punch like a circle in the middle and then cut from there with your scissors. That's way easier. Sally, you gave me a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Even if the ticket punch doesn't work. All right, I'm putting the bow up here. This is some of my favorite ribbon because it goes with everything. This white woven ribbon and it's pretty affordable. All right, the last thing is I'm using the same sentiment and I'm just going to use a scrap of paper. And let's see if I can do it without smearing it. That's the problem. I'm just gonna stamp it there. And get out my paper trimmer. And we're just gonna use the words Christmas cheer. All right. Do you guys have the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer? Everybody seems to love it. I am a, I prefer a guillotine paper cutter, one that chops down. Um, that's just some, I don't know, personal preference, but I do, I do think that the Stampin' Up! trimmer is great if you like that kind of trimmer. All right, so see, it's just a rectangle, nothing fancy, and um, mini dimensionals, which I'm gonna pretend that these are because I didn't pull them out. Many dimensionals would work best. And we're gonna put it right here across the bottom. And then you just put your peppermints in. So cute, right? So cute. So let's talk about, you know, not doing it for Christmas. You could do it for Halloween. You could do it for um, all different holidays. Autumn, 
and then just put like um, candy corn or whatever in there. All right, I hope you guys like that project. It's kind of a, a silly one. See, this is what I ne needed to do. Dimensionals popped up with that underneath. I think that is the best way to go with those. I was thinking it was the, the red part that went on the outside. No, but it's the this one. It goes on dimensionals. All right, three teacher gifts done. Hooray. Now remember, you guys, um, this hostess code right here is what I'm using for Facebook Fridays this month. If you put your order in by Monday, um, Monday night, then I will send you all three of those make and takes for free. If you ordered last weekend, I mailed yours day before yesterday, so hopefully it'll be there to you soon. Thank you for your orders. Um, I'm reading your uh, comment, Trisha, you have lanterns. Yes, they're very trendy right now. I'm seeing them everywhere. TJ Maxx has a ton of them. Um, okay, so um, minimum order, use the hostess code, I'll mail you these. You don't even have to email me, I'm just gonna mail them to you if I see that you've used that hostess code. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that I have a class, I t I'm sure you've seen it. I have a class that goes with this seasonal lantern bundle that I just showed you, three more projects. And it's, I designed it to be kind of a stamp, stamp a stack, which means you'll have a stack of cards when you're done. Um, these are These are the first, design you'll get two of those and look how cute it is on the envelope I just love this stamp and it's stamp it's an easy stamp to stamp this one is a little more over the top here's that window sheet that we used see inside that's kind of a more fancy stepped up card and that one's Christmas Mary with Christmas cheer here's the envelopes that go with it the class will come with eight um, eight projects, eight make and take. So four card designs, two of each. This one is Hanukkah. And I don't know anybody who celebrates Hanukkah. So I decided if you're like me, there's an alternate Christmas um, card also. And you can do, you can stamp your envelope depending on which one you like. And then the fourth card is an autumn's, autumn greetings card. I love those little gourds and the pine cones and everything. So pretty. See, isn't that how oh, it looks almost like a... Like a Chinese lantern I don't know it's so pretty it reminds me of some things we saw in Thailand here are the envelopes for this one very pretty this class deadline is Monday so you've got to register by Monday there's also a 3d project and oh let me turn the light on because it's just so cute my kids love this um, it's a little light isn't that so cute so the instructions will be in the PDF and you'll have materials to make one of these so all together you'll have nine projects when you're finished with this class. So if you want to purchase this class, the bundle is included and you get some things for free if you buy it as part of the class. Um, I can't even remember off the top of my head. I think it's um, copper trim. I don't know, I have to look back. But I know that the deadline is Monday. You can email me for the link or you can look on my project sheet. I actually have a link on here for you on the second page if you're interested in that class. Okay, whew, that was some some busy projects. Those were some, that was some work, especially that pizza box, but I love it. It was worth it. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining me. If you have questions, I will come back and answer them. I'm too ADD to read your, your comments and, and teach you things at the same time. So I apologize if you ask me something and I haven't answered it, I will. Hop over to my blog, enter the giveaway, and don't forget to use the hostess code this week. Thanks so much, you guys. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye.